Hello, my name is Professor Farhan Safezi. I'm the medical director of the ELSA Institute in the uh, Institute of Zurich, Switzerland. Um, what is the difference between LASIK and PRK? Let me show you how I explain it to my patients. If this is the thickness of your cornea, and it is the cornea that I modify in order to get your diopters down to zero, then back in 1986, when the first eczema lasers came up, they were treating the surface. First, the surgeon had to scrape off the, what we call the epithelium, the outermost layer of the cornea that, that regenerates over the days. And then they performed uh, an ablation of the cornea using an excimer laser. Um, the downfall of this was healing was slow and visual recovery was slow. And it was quite painful. So a few years later, a new technique came up, which was called LASIK surgery. And basically, in LASIK, what the surgeon does is he uses the exact same laser as in PRK, but before applying the XML laser, he creates a lamella, either mechanically or with a second laser, a femtosecond laser, then treats, and at the end puts the lamella back. So the cornea is, is almost untouched at the end of the procedure, healing is very quick, visual recovery is quick. I have had this surgery on my own eyes I was minus seven, ten years ago. I had LASIK bilaterally. That was the state of the art back in 2009. If you would ask me today whether I would prefer LASIK or the most modern version of PRK, TransPRK, I would say, clearly say, TransPRK. Now let me explain why at the ELSA Institute we perform 95% TransPRK nowadays, whereas ten years ago I was performing 95% LASIK. It's all about reducing the risk. So what the most modern version of PRK does is, I use a very modern laser to laser from the outside. The laser takes care of the outermost layer. I do not have to remove it mechanically. It's the laser who does it. And the resulting bed, the wound bed, is so smooth that visual recovery is extremely quick. It takes three to four days instead of three to four weeks, as it used to be 15 years ago with the old PRK. Um, the pain is, has been driven down substantially. Patient, com patient comes in the next day and if I happen to have treated one eye only for a certain reason, I can barely tell which eye was treated when the patient comes to the door. The eye is very calm and quiet. And um, as I said, visual recovery is quick. So the main elements that drove the field to transfer from PRK to LASIK 10, 15 years ago, these main reasons are gone. And the most important reason for me as a clinician, surgeon and scientist to perform trans-PRK over LASIK is the integrity of the cornea. Anything I remove leaves a thinner wall. A thinner wall means more biomechanical instability. And if you compare a LASIK procedure to PRK over a lifetime, the PRKI is much more stable. And stability is what you need for your cornea to stay with the same vision over the next decades. The most dreaded complication in refractive laser surgery is, is something we call ictasia. And it's called ictasia after LASIK. 95% of these cases occur after LASIK surgery and not after PRK because this lamella I create in LASIK does not contribute to corneal biomechanics the integrity of the eye for the rest of the patient's life. It's just a layer sitting on top of, of there, giving you nice vision, but the cornea is weakened. It's much less weakened in PRK. And as a surgeon, my main, my main motivation is not to harm the patient's eye. I always need to choose the surgery that is the most efficient and the safest. And trans-PRK is so much safer than LASIK. Now the last element is smile. Smile surgery was an attempt to overcome the negative effect that LASIK has on biomechanics. Instead of cutting a whole lamella and smile, you cut the lamella 80% open and then create a lenticule of tissue that you extract in order to perform, perform vision correction. So smile is better in terms of biomechanics than LASIK, but still is worse than transpiration. And if you go into the literature, into the basic science showing all these coronal biomechanical changes, then you will see that our group is amongst the leading bio
coronal biomechanical groups worldwide. And we have published a number of peer-reviewed articles on that topic. So as a surgeon and as a scientist, I would prefer to perform trans-PRK whenever it is safe and sound and possible for